sponsored by Winwing Technologies, replicates the real Viper's mechanical movement with full metal construction. Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well and welcome to our latest naval battle and what I hope is going to be our most complicated and definitely our largest naval battle so far. This comes off the end of half a week of work to try and get this working and fingers crossed it's going to finally work. Welcome to the Battle of Midway, 4th of June 1942. We're going to split this video up into three sections. Section 1, we're going to spend a few minutes talking about the original battle and how it happened in real life. Section 2, we're going to look at what we're actually going to do today and a subsequent video. And section three, we're going to do one of those recreations. So first, just a couple of minutes looking very simplistically at what happened in real life. If you already know about the Battle of Midway, you might want to skip this section. The battle officially starts at 0430 local time. 4th June 1942. Our simulation note is going to exclude any submarines, anti-submarine warfare aircraft or recon aircraft. Everything else will be modelled. Here is Midway. I know it says Saipan but just pretend it's Midway. There were four naval forces of consequence on this day. Over here is the Japanese invasion fleet. Here is the Midway support fleet otherwise known as the Japanese second fleet. Here was the Japanese first carrier fleet and here was the Americans actually split into two task forces task force 16 and task force 17. Let's go through the forces quickly and then talk about what happened. The Japanese first fleet commanders Yamamoto in Yamato battleship and Nugumo in one of the four aircraft carriers. This consisted of four fleet aircraft carriers Akagi, Kaga, Hiru and Soyu. Two battleships including Yamato three cruisers, 12 destroyers. Aircraft on the four carriers were 75 Mitsubishi A6 M2 Type 21 Zeke Fighters Zeros, air to air, 70 Aichi D3 A1 Val dive bombers, 81 Nakajima B5 N2 Kate torpedo bombers, two Yokosuka D4 Y1 Judy dive bombers, and eight Jean biplane legacy torpedo bombers giving a total of 236 on the second fleet four heavy cruisers two destroyers and 12 float planes and the invasion fleet we've got two light carriers five battleships four heavy cruisers two light cruisers and 35 support ships including the actual invasion ships let's talk about the location we know that 0430 local time the first carrier fleet of the Japanese was 140 nautical miles out of bearing of 313 from Bullseye. Bullseye is Midway Island. Second fleet, I cannot narrow it down. I know it was off to the west by at least 100 miles, but I don't know otherwise where it is. So I put it out here to the west, just over 100 nautical miles. Finally, the invasion fleet was due west 570 nautical miles from Midway. And we've got everything set here perfectly to scale, by the way. Next. Americans, Task Force 17, commanded by Admiral Spruance. One carrier, Yorktown, three cruisers, five destroyers. As actually, it turns out it was six destroyers, but don't worry, I moved the extra destroyer over to this one and it'll work fine. Aboard Yorktown were 25 Grumman Air 4 Wildcat fighters, 35 Douglas SPD 3 Dauntless dive bombers, and 13 Douglas TD 1 Devastator torpedo bombers. 20 nautical miles to the southeast was Task Force 16. Rear Admiral Fletcher. Two carriers, Enterprise and Hornet. Five cruisers, ten destroyers. Actually, nine destroyers, but it makes up, so it's okay. 54 F-4 fighters. 75 STB 1-2-3 dive bombers. And 24 TD-1 torpedo bombers. Giving a total of 228. Finally, don't forget that Midway had its own reinforced air unit. Six Grumman TDF-1 Avenger torpedo bombers, four Martin B-26 Marauder medium bombers, 17 Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress heavy bombers, 19 Douglas SBD-2 Dauntless dive bombers, 17 Chancefort SB-2U-3 indicator dive bombers, 21 Brewster F-2A Buffalo fighters, and seven Grumman F-4F-3 eight Wildcat fighters, giving a total one of 91. Remember, we're missing out anti-surface warfare and recon aircraft. So those are the forces. And those were where the forces were centered. Next, what happened? The attack started obviously with the Japanese planning the attack. They planned to take Midway with a minimal of naval resistance. Therefore, to take the Americans out of the Pacific War altogether. 
Well, the very clever Americans at Hawaii actually broke the Japanese communication ciphers. They could listen to what the Japanese were planning and they knew exactly what was going to happen and when it was going to happen. So, knowing that the first fleet was going to be around this area here at this time, Spruance and Fletcher moved their task forces northeast of the island here with the aim of obviously pincering the Japanese first fleet. At 0430, the first action was taken by Nagamo. He sent several airborne raids to attack Midway, currently unaware of the American naval fleet here. They did serious damage to Midway. If we were to quantify it, we'd say they destroyed the defences by about 50%. They then returned back to Nagumo's carriers for rearm. At this point, Midway responded, launched several raids of its own heavy bombers, medium bombers and dive attack aircraft against the Japanese first fleet. All of these were successfully repelled or of no effect. Also, heavy damage was done to those raids. At this point, the Japanese first fleet via recon aircraft found about the existence of at least one of these carriers, I think Yorktown of the Americans. By the way, I've put the rough positions of what happened over the next 24 hours, and you can see those there. Now, knowing about the Americans' naval existence, Nagumu decided to rearm his entire four air wings of aircraft for anti-ship rather than anti-ground. Takes about 45 minutes. In that time, the Americans launched a massive raid. I think it was Dauntlesses to attack the Japanese. By this time, the Japanese air-to-air -air fighters, the Zeros, were out of ammo and mostly out of fuel. This raid was catastrophic to the Japanese. It destroyed three of the aircraft carriers one escaped. That one that escaped then launched a revenge attack against Yorktown with several mixed aircraft raids and did serious damage to Yorktown. At that point the Americans raided again and sunk the final and fourth Japanese carrier. That was essentially the end of the battle of consequence. Casualty figures from Wiki. Americans lost one carrier, Yorktown went down, one destroyer, about 150 aircraft lost, about 300 killed including three as prisoners. Japanese obviously lost lots more. All of the carriers, four of them sunk, one heavier cruiser sunk, one heavy cruiser damaged. All of the aircraft were lost, 248. If you, that doesn't match up with 236, that's because we're not including the recon aircraft. Over 3,000 killed and 37 captured. Obviously a massive win for the Americans, again for the reason that they had the intelligence, they had the upper hand, had the initiative, and therefore they had the surprise. So, second part of this video, what are we going to do today? We're not going to do the full reenactment of the actual battle because, well, why would we? It's already been done in real life. Also, it's not conducive to a video. The battle lasted way over 24 hours. Also, technical difficulties are going to stop us doing it. So, there are two things I would like to do in two separate videos. One is an easy one. Let's play the Battle of Midway exactly as it was, but the first strike fleet here, instead of being a legacy strike fleet, why don't we replace it with the 2022 spec Japanese carrier strike group. What would happen if we had a 2022 strike group? Don't think it's going to be a walk in the park. It's not. Bearing in mind the Japanese only have uh, 18 aircraft, F-35s I think that would serve on that. Could they withstand the attack from Hornet, Enterprise and Yorktown? 200 and something aircraft. That would be interesting. That's the second video. That's the easy one to get to work. The hard one is what we're doing today. What we're doing today is, and this is the question I've been asking myself several evenings when I couldn't sleep, could the Japanese have won this battle? And we're going to see if they could have won it with different tactics. Work with me here. Let's pretend the Americans broke the Japanese ciphers and everything went as planned. Now, let's pretend that the Japanese also broke the American ciphers. Let's imagine the Japanese were listening into the Americans. In that case, I had to put myself in the shoes of Yamamoto and Nagumo. If I knew that the Americans were going to be here waiting for me, what would I do? Well, I would set a trap for them. And this is what I've planned. I would have sent... The second fleet ahead, uh, 100 miles ahead, and I would have put it there, going that way. Why would I do that? Because that is my misdirection. I am going to put it there because that's where the Americans are expecting my first fleet to be. They'll think that's the first fleet, and by the time they realise it's not the first fleet, it's too late. We would have caught them in a trap. The actual first fleet, you know, the destroyer fleet, if you like, with the aircraft carriers, would have done something different. In fact, the pretty easiest way is if I if I'd actually snuck them round several hours in advance and got behind the Americans something like that 
in a trap. Now, they wouldn't be expecting me here because they think I'm going to be there. Because that's what I've said in my plans, in my fake plans. What I've actually done is I've gone around here. I'm going to sneak up on them. I'm not going to launch any kind of air recon or anything to find them. I know where they are waiting within 10 miles or so, maybe 20 miles. So I can just go for them. If I launched air, they would pick the, my air up on radar. They would know where I am. Also, I don't think the Americans would search out here personally because they think I'm there. They think they know where I am. I've had to agree with the boys how close they think I could actually get before they would have picked me up by, you know, an SBY or something. We've agreed 50 nautical miles, 55 miles. So I'm going to start the battle 50 miles away, close as I think I could get in stealth mode, by which I mean no aircraft up in the air, okay, guys? At which point, they've picked me up. And that's where the battle is going to start. The battle starts with the Americans seeing these guys here and therefore... Uh, midway launching their b-17s their marauders and all their others against him there so second fleet is going to take the flak from midway that just leaves these two to battle what's going to happen then well let me bring you through to my next slide well here is what i think is going to happen so we start with the japanese at flank speed behind the americans 50 miles back this is going to be very complex by the way um so please get a copy as we work through this the americans are at cruise speed currently cruising towards where they believe the target was going to be at this point we start the battle with the americans just realize that the japanese are there so let's talk about the forces first of all the japanese forces are pretty much identical to what they actually had in the strike fleet they've got the two battleships as you'll see they've got the cruisers they've got the destroyers it's taken several days to get everything working hitboxes working the damage models working it's working they've got the four carriers and they've got the 236 aircraft what we're going to do is at this point we split the fleet we send the escort vessels in, three cruisers, two battleships, and a whole bunch of destroyers, and we flank speed into the Americans for the attack. We're going to leave the four carriers out here with a few escort destroyers. Why is that? Well, they can hit from afar. They're going to start launching the aircraft, and they're going to hit from afar, but these guys with the big guns have got to go in. The only way I'm going to destroy the Americans is to get close to them. The bombers, 170 or something bombers, half of them are going to go north and then south, and you can see my attack plans there. They're going to attack carriers Yorktown, Enterprise, and Hornet. The other half of the bombers are going to go south, then west, and attack the three carriers again. The CAP, the air-to-air -air fighters, I've been thinking about this. And what I've done is I've split them in two. Forty of them are going to be up here. And they're going to patrol and protect our carriers. Forty of them are going to be down here and patrol and protect our carriers. That is the Japanese battle plan. Next. How would the Americans react once they find out the Japanese are behind them? Well, I've had to put my Fletcher and Spruance hat on, and this is what I think they would do. The carriers can't be anywhere near the Japanese. They're going to get the carriers out. Where would they go? They would send them to Midway to get under the cover of the B-17s and whatnot. The carriers are going to go flank speed, 30 knots, and head towards Midway. And they're going to take some minor escorts with them. This guy, Yorktown's going to take a destroyer and a cruiser. Enterprise and Hornet are going to take two cruisers and two destroyers. Everything else is going to act as a picket line. I think that would be the most realistic thing would happen. You've got a whole bunch of cruisers and a whole bunch of destroyers. They're going to flank speed up towards the Japanese, cut off there, and act as a picket line there to stop them. Because they're all about saving their carriers. That's what I think they would do. That's what I would do as an admiral. Air wings are the same quantities as we have in real life. 228, I think. Most of them are uh, anti-ship. They're going to kind of mirror what the Japanese are doing to keep it fair. Half of them are going to head south, then, sorry, east, then north, and attack all four carriers. The other half are going to attack north, then east, and again, attack the carriers. If you're wondering why they don't just fly as a crow flies, because then they would fly over the battleships and get shot down. They're not intelligent enough to dodge, so I'm doing the dodging for them. The remaining fighters, 80 or something fighters, are going to do similar to what the Japanese did. They're going to spread out in orbits here and protect the retreating carriers. It looks weird that they're kind of spread down like that. That's because they're going to be following the moving carrier as it moves at 30 knots. That's the battle. We have no idea how it's going to go. There's going to be... Well, let me show you just to prove I'm not cheating. Uh, in this here. Midway is not simulated in this. The second th group, is they are not part of what I'm trying to simulate here. We've got 464 aircraft and a total of 513 units. Next, we have to talk about the inaccuracies. The ships are all good. Um, tested, the ships should be fine. Damage models, which historically have been bad with the World War II units, are fixed all the way through and should be working realistically. The aircraft are, are in accuracy, but I think we'll get away with it. We've got all of the aircraft here, 236. I couldn't get some of the types working. So to keep things simple, uniform and workable, they are all going to be A6Ms. 
They're going to come in two flavors, an air-to-air -air flavor like this, which are going to be the air-to-air -air guys, and the other guys are going to be an air-to-ground variant. They're going to be a dive bomber, and they're going to be like that. So the types are slightly different, the quantities are the same, and the way they act should be the same. Fortunately, we don't have working torpedo bombers, um, so tor torpedoes have been replaced by dive bombers. With the Americans, same problem, sadly. We cannot get the American Pacific Theater planes working yet. They will work in the future, but we're just not there yet. So we've got an analog. Best analog we're going to have today is a P-51. It will come in two flavors, air to air and air to ground, just like the A-6M. Otherwise, quantities will be the same. Torpedo bombers have been replaced by dive bombers. Again, can't get the torpedoes firing right. So the inaccuracy is the, uh, the airframes, but hopefully it should be negated because I'm getting the same on either side, if that makes sense. That's the best we can get, and I still think that's going to be an epic fight. Uh, which leads us to predictions. Like I said, I've tried some bits in isolation to make sure everything works, and it does, but no idea what's going to happen when we put it all together. Predictions, please, Scott. I don't know. I'm 50-50 on this one. Projection Simba. Team America. I couldn't get my guys flying. I haven't had enough time to set human spawns up and get them working properly. So what my guys are going to do is something that's important, and you guys have pointed out to me because I'm listening to what you say. These carriers will get bombed. They will have dive bombers bombing down on them. In real life, what these carriers did when the bombers attacked them is they span around in circles. They did huge turns. AI can't do that, by the way. They're too stupid. Humans can. Simba is going to be controlling these carriers here. When dive bombers attack you, you are allowed to take direct control of that carrier and you're allowed to make it dodge, just like Spruance and Fletcher would have done. Once you've done the dodging and you've survived, put them back on a flank course for uh, midway. A firm. Scott, you're doing the same, but you're Nagamu. Uh, you are going to control the four Japanese carriers. Again, you may only control them once the bombers are coming in for you. You can get them turning in circles and then put them back where they were. Roger. Unpour server. Get ready for a fight between 500 and something aircraft and ships. Go, go, go. Is it going to crash? Is it going to crash? Is it going to crash? It's going. It's going. Right, valued viewers. I'm extremely excited. It's taking a lot of work to get this going. And I can almost guarantee it's all going to work. I've got really relatively good at bug fixing now, which means we can actually go back and do some of the other battles that were full of bugs. Let's have a look at the Japanese First Fleet in its new configuration. It has four final cruisers at the front. It has the mighty Yamato. Look at that. 18.1 inch guns in the middle. It has the four carriers at the back. And it has the destroyers surrounding the whole fleet. Anti-submarine. It's not going to be that relevant today. So that, I hope you'll agree, is a super sexy fleet. Let's have a look at the air wings. 236 aircraft, all going to take off one by one. Half, uh, no, three quarters bombers, one quarters air to air as they were in real life. Have an average launch rate of one every five seconds over the whole fleet. No, sorry, one every eight seconds because there's only four carriers here. Look at that mighty, mighty fleet. Look at that. Imagine that coming towards you. That there is the first uh, Japanese fleet. Is it how it would actually be laid out in real life? I don't know. I can't find the information of the actual formation, if anyone even really still knows. But that is my guess. How would you have it? Why have I got it like that? Cruiser screen at the front. I mean, I've literally learned this just from doing battles myself. Cruiser screen always at the front. Battleships afterwards, they're going to shoot over the cruisers. Destroyers, as in all the books I've read, are around the flanks, around the rear, to protect from subs. And then you've got the swishy goo in the middle. The carriers. So that's what... Look at the smoke. It's amazing. Before the server gets all slow and jaggy, we're going to go for... Uh, why don't we go for Spruance's Task Force 17? Oh, we're turning back here. Why are they turning back like this? It's because, remember, half of the fleet, or more than half the fleet, is now going to form the picket line. So let's hope they don't smash into any carriers. That would be embarrassing. Cruisers. Destroyers. Two funnel destroyers. Uh, I think three funnel cruisers. I can't see any cruisers. They are there somewhere. That's a cruiser. Massive cruiser. The American heavy cruisers were absolutely massive. And of course, you've got Yorktown, who's now running away with a, a small uh, fleet. Let's have a look at uh, Fletcher's Task Force 16. Oh my god, look at that. That's a close one. Don't do it. It's not worth it. They know what they're doing. Very experienced. I felt, I'm not even sure if they were experienced by this point, actually. 1942. Um, anyway, you've got that's Enterprise, that's Hornet. You've got these. Uh, this is the cruiser they're taking as defense. You can see the other cruisers and destroyers heading off for the picket line. No collisions. That's excellent. 
Let's have a look at some really weird naval Mustangs. It's the best we can do. And like I said, you won't believe the amount of work it had to take to get even this working. Naval converted Mustangs. Yes, they are steam catapult lugs. No, I can't take them off. It's the only way I can get it working. Off they go. They should average about one plane every 11 seconds or something. Brought four new ones. As soon as four take off, they bring four new ones up. It's the best way I've found of getting this to work reliably. And so far, the plus side is everything seems to be working reliably, Scott. Which is not how practice went, but... There you well, go. Uh, with all the hours that you put into this, man, <laughs> it's worked smooth. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we are learning how to finally, finally get this stuff working. It's a mixture of just learning the nuances of DCS, and it has lots of nuances, and learning the basic Lua scripting and getting that right. And so we're finally starting to get that right. So what you can see now is the American picket line going off and doing their picket line thing. The carriers going flank speed, running away, as I'm sure they would do, I think towards here the protection of 150 or something aircraft there japanese the front guys are going off to war if you like going up for a gunfight as i would want to do the carriers are staying back with some basic support they should be slowing down yep you can see they've stopped now the carriers have stopped moving they're now static while well, these guys head off at flank now was a 28 knots for a yamato class battleship won't be any combat for a while so we will regale ourselves in these beautiful scenes of the Japanese first fleet. Now, of course, in real life, the Midway was a major shock to the Japanese. They just weren't expecting to lose it. And to lose four carriers and 200 and something aircraft at the very, well, pretty much beginning of the war was a major setback. It wasn't irrecoverable because they had lots more aircraft, they had lots more carriers. The main hit they took was, of course, Turkey shooting Marianas, where they lost 600 aircraft, I think. That was irrecoverable and they never recovered. In terms of these guys kind of going in a straight line and being a bit unrealistic, yeah, yeah but, but, you know, it's good enough for what we're doing today. The anti-ship aircraft should not react to each other because remember, they're not meant to be zeros, they're not many PP 51s they'll just fly past each other. Nothing's going to happen for a while, so what I'll do is I'll turn the camera off and we'll get back at the first sign of action. Camera back on and here we go. The first American anti-ship are 17 miles away from the cap and the first Japanese are... 70 miles away. Uh, that's because I pretty much mirrored the routes to keep everything there and square. So they're about to run in to a wall of defense. Triple A fire from the ships and the Zeros and the naval Mustangs. Here we go, guys. The first Japanese Zeros are attacking the first Japanese naval anti ship Mustangs. And merge. Fight. The anti-ship aircraft are set up in roleplay to defend themselves, not shoot back, but to defend themselves passively, just as they would have done in real life if they were dive bombers or torpedo bombers. Well, an interesting fight. Americans have spotted the Japanese. Americans have spotted the Japanese. Gunnery. First American down. First American down. It's kicking off. Oh, there's going to be so much to watch. But we're really interested in looking for if all this melee is which anti-ship get through. Ooh, p 51s have spotted the zero. Pally. Here they come. Save that fleet. Merge. First American anti-ship raid has failed, failed, failed. Three merges now. We've got three merges. Sounds about a short reaction. Yeah, yeah. are running. The waves got uh, annihilated from what I remember with no air cover. Absolutely. This is exactly what happened in real life. These, almost all of these anti-ship were destroyed. In the end, the last one got through because the Zeros ran out of ammo. How it would have been, guys. All AI is set to maximum level. That's another, ja that's a Japanese anti-shipper down. It's a Val or something. Oh, look at him. He's jetting upside down. Which is also historically accurate, I believe. Yes, it is. So, absolutely. Getting whacked. I can't see any anti ship have made it through. Has anyone seen any anti ship that's made it through? No. Uh, oh, no. There are, are um, four Japanese have... coming in from the north. Yep, Watching. yeah, we have four zeros coming in from the north, exactly. But the. Uh,
destroy. Japanese, the Zeros have slightly better weapons, 20mm cannon to the Americans half inch guns. I think I might see a blue anti-ship that's made it through. It's kind of hard to... No, he's dead. He's dead. Right, where to watch? What do you want to watch, Valid Viewers? I really don't know what to watch. And like we're saying, most of the anti-ship attacks that happened in this battle were shot down. The only one that really made it through and had any impression was the ones that attacked when the defenders were out of ammo. Oh, we have uh, two ones heading towards the Japanese fleet right now. Roger. Just so you know, Scott, your uh, voice is so low it can't be heard over the game. Uh, I've turned you up to 200%, so I can't do anything. Yeah, I'm at 100. I don't know what's going on. That looks like me shooting that plane. I'm missing for a hot minute. Okay, anyone made it through? No one's made it through yet. All defense is good. Defense is just too efficient. I like those Japanese coming from the north, guys. Maybe they'll get a shot. Maybe. Surface fleets are 24 miles away from each other. Oh, we have two ones inbound, or I'm sorry, zeros inbound to the uh, US fleet. Uh, from the north. They... Uh, correct. Yep. Yep, 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 Six yep. Six miles out. No one's defending it, and I don't know why. That's... I've set them up to defend, guys. It's because they're swarming everything from the east. Yeah, I would say the Japanese are doing probably doing better, depending on how you're going to measure it. Now, these Japanese will run out of ammo, just like they did in real life. They carry less ammo than the Mustang, just like they do in real life. So, this is all going to be modelled. They're getting close, guys. I know there's loads of boom-boom to watch up there, but this is the critical moment. Moment. These guys have gone right over that small surface fleet. Are they going to get shot? No, they're not. It's just far enough away. They are two miles from the retreating carriers. Our flak is starting. Flak is starting. Right, let's go and watch this, guys. They've got through. They're on target. This is going to be interesting. Simba, you can move the carriers now. You can move your carriers. They're diving, they're diving. Move them now. Okay, you can see a sharp pull left or right from those carriers. Ooh, big hits. Bombs away. Carriers haven't turned in time. They should have been 45 degrees by now. Do you need me to move them, Simba? Go ahead. Right. Uh, you're doing commentating, Scott. I'm doing the carriers. Ah, uh, where's goddamn tactical commander game? Okay. Right. Looks like we got some hits on Intrepid. Um, down to two third or uh, third. Right. Just get there. Watch this valley Jewish Set path. Set that. Ah, 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 ah. Go. Okay, I got one turn and in. We have four more uh, zeros heading into the fleet right now uh, from the east and four from the north. Set path. Ah, 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 ah. Right, they should be turning. Let me check. They are not turning. They're just ignoring me. Uh, welcome to DCS Valued Viewers. They are ignoring the orders. Are you getting the same thing, Simba? Simba, respond. Yep, it's disabled control for unit. Well, I've given them orders and they're not listening. And there's nothing else I can do about it. I can set path. Stop attack, set path. Go around. And he is not making a left pull. All right, we tried. Let me see if I can move the Japanese. Yep. Is this the Americans got through? I have interest. No. Never mind, guys. We'll just have to suck it up. I mean, the, the American cap have jumped straight on them. So they did get some bombs away, but the American cap have just gone nuts and shot them down, basically. Yep, second so wave drop. All right, you just successfully defended that attack by the looks of things, guys. Oh, hang on, sorry, another attack's coming in. Right, oh, this is getting, this is getting big, guys. Ooh, that was close. Come on, this is a big battle, guys. They 
Couldn't get the bombs out on my screen. No, not on mine. There's one. No, one's made it through. One's made it through. He bottled it. He bottled it. They all bottled it on my screen. And now they're in attack by the air-to-air -air fighters. Jeez, that's a big burst. That's a big burst of guns. That Japanese friggin' made of stalinium. Problem with a half inch, you need a friggin' cannon. There's only about a thousand bullets. And a hole in the wing the size of uh, a bowling ball. Americans out of ammo. Someone's ground strafing the ship. This guy's got him with cannon. Wherever he was. Lost him now. Oh, it's so complex. I like this. I think they forgot that they have bombs. No, they were. They're too much. Feet. They're too much uh, fire on and they gave. Oh my god, look at that. Oh, shot his own guy down. American blue on blue. Who saw that coming? It's dampen game. Oh, yeah, how about that? Man, they suck up a lot of fire. He shot through his own guy, shot him, and then shot the other guy. Oh, the Americans are going nuts over the carriers now. They want revenge, and they want revenge now. Come on, Japanese, stay on target, stay on target. The hell, not staying on target. Man, this is fun to watch. It's gonna stick it. It's gonna stick it in the drink. Boom! Japanese down. That's oh my. Oh, yes, they've defended really well. Oh right, they're the the only. Okay, I'm just doing a situation overlook here. The only bombers to get on target have been that attack. This lot has failed so far. This lot has failed so far. So we not miss anything. The only damage that's been done is one bomb to in that. I know they're called Intrepid, but one bomb to Enterprise. One bomb to Hornet. Sorry, two bombs to Hornet. And the rest so far is a turkey shoot. The problem is they're all running out of ammo. They're out of ammo. All they can do is chase them around. Look at that. All they can do is chase them around. I mean, it does work. Oh, no. I'll take that back. Take it back. They are not out of ammo. I know they're missing, but everyone is set to max skill. I can tell you that. Another Japanese down. Another blue on blue. Oh, come on, guys. Really? Okay, another Japanese down. This is fun to watch. So if you want your carriers to move, you've got to make sure that that uh, path line turns green. My, I couldn't get the path line turning green. It always was yellow for me. There's one thing we couldn't, we didn't get time to practice is moving manually the carriers. You know what? I didn't think it would be that hard. But you know what? The Americans are doing it. They're defending now anyway. I don't think anyone else is going to get through. I mean, look at it. It's a it's a maelstrom up there. The closest the Japanese can get is six miles to the carrier now that I'm seeing. And they get picked up in ACM. So once you're done setting your path, right click and then... Uh, I wish we'd get a kill count to see how many have been killed and stuff. Too bad we don't have that, uh, but it looks like the uh, Japanese wave has been successfully um, repelled. Yes, it's been repelled. It took a while, but they got the Americans up there. It's nice to see that happening. And we got uh, four zeros going into the water right now, so... Yep. Uh, Sorted their stuff out. Gonna get past that. It's really bad gunnery going on from the Americans. I don't know why they're missing so much. I'll take that back. Take that back. And he's dead. Pilot kill. Another pilot kill. Maybe not. <laughs> Naval Mustangs everywhere. Oh, murdered. These Yanks are absolutely insatiable. 
They're just chewing, chewing the Japanese up. Oh man, the closest uh, piece of going to the Japanese carrier is uh, finally going into the drink. Oh, bless him. And he's flying in a convertible. He's doing the VR style. Now, here's the thing, value viewers, is that this is pretty much how it happened in real life. The the defenses run out, but remember, just like in real life, these defenses, are, are, at some point, they're going to run out of ammo, just like they did in real life, and then the dive bombers will get through by attrition. Okay, so it's been secured. The Americans have plugged the gap, which is great to see. Uh, now, here's interesting. The surface battle is going to start. 14 miles. God, that's gone quick. The surface battle is going to start, guys. Keep me informed if any bombers get through to the carriers, but I get the feeling they're probably not now, but we'll see. But let's have a look at the surface fleets and whether see if we've got any guns up yet or not. Not yet. Japanese. I, I yeah, Japanese no guns up. Americans. Americans no guns up. No, nope, too close. Uh, sorry, too far away over the horizon. Right, let's go and watch some more uh, fun time. Boom, boom. Nothing like I'd like to see in more. There's a couple of Yanks on the Japanese. Oh, down he goes. Down he goes. Absolutely chewed up. Chewed. Look at that. It's on fire. Great stuff to watch. Get out. Get him. Get him, Jackson. Don't let him near your carrier. Oh, there's a couple of boys, a couple of good old boys have come out. This makes such a frigging cool movie. What would you call it? Um, I don't know. They've already done the Battle of Midway twice, haven't they? So, Caps Battle of Midway. Like uh, two more American boys have come out to play. We're defending our carrier, because we need somewhere to land. Chewed up another Japanese. Chewed him up, boys. It looks like the Jap the um, Zeros are modelled tougher than the uh, Mustangs, which is actually the wrong way in real life. The Zeros were much less resilient than the Mustangs, but, you know, it's... I, I didn't even look at that part of it, to be honest. It's going to go into yeah, the drink. No self-sealing no self fuel tanks for them. Yeah, but it's just not modelled that far in game, unfortunately. Um, right, so everything's completely neutralised, guys. Now, that's one thing I did not expect to see, to be honest. I honestly expected to see all carriers destroyed by now. Uh, again, I've only been able to play it in isolation so far. No one's showing any signs of getting through at the moment by the looks of things. Right, I'm going to go and have a look at the surface fleet, guys. They are now 10 miles away. Let's have a see if their guns up. Guns up. Sendai is getting guns up. I'm firing! Oh, yeah, firing. Here we go. Yeah, Sendai's right. firing. Let's check Izuzu. Where's Izuzu? Where's Azuzu gone? Azuzu's missing. Azuzu's ya Yamamoto's in Yamato. That there is Yamato with Yamamoto on the... Oh, the 18.1 inch guns are aiming up. Here he goes, guys. Those are volleys of, of six at a time. 18.1 inch shells, the biggest naval guns ever. Attached to the biggest naval battleship ever in the history of the world. Past and present. Fire. Right, I'm going to watch the uh, service fleet, guys. Let me know if anything interesting happens there. Now, look at that. That is one site you do not want to be facing. Uh, the lead uh, bell on the flank is getting better. Yep. Those 18-inch shells are raining down on this bell. Just two, two will destroy it. And there's the second one. Although he's not destroyed. It must have been a 6-inch or a 5-inch. These are just equipped with 5 inches. Uh, the cruisers have got like, I don't know, probably eight inches. Look at that. Look at that. Coming towards you. Got to watch those. Oh, yeah, that bell's going down. Damage. Sendai's taking some damage, but nothing major. Let me have a look at Yamato. My favourite battleship ever. Look at that. Oh, the bell is red health. Bell is going down. I'm surprised it's not... I'm probably... Oh, look at Sendai. Sendai's getting smashed at the middle. Four funnel at the front of the Japanese. Can you put it at flanks, emergency flank speed, 33 knots to catch up the Azuzu's uh, Scott? The lead 
Bell is dead. They are. We've got to bail down. Let's bail down. Alright, I'm just getting my situational awareness. Okay. Guns are still up. 18 inches are up. Look at the size of that director tower. And radar and everything. It's awesome. There we go. 18 inches of firing again, guys. What a sweet, sweet ship. Sendai is taking a lick in. She's kind of stuck at the front there. Again, it's the point of the cruiser screen, you know. They're there. They're going to take the damage. Two distinct American fleets. That's Task Force 16. That's Task Force 17. They're going to verge in the pincer. Quickly check on the aerial battle before we go back to the naval. Okay, no, nothing's happening on the aerial, as in no one's got through at least. The fighters are doing an excellent job. Oh, we're losing another bell, guys. It's those 18-inch shells. There's just too much fire. And another bell. Another bell, yep. Wow. Yep, the bell's going down. The way I did it, uh, Valley Viewers, is I set the destroyer health toughness to the same as the destroyer toughness over here i set the cruiser toughness to the same cruiser toughness over here i don't know if that's realistic but that was the fair thing to do um, and, and the best way i could do it and then the yamato i set the same as an aircraft carrier in terms of toughness hit points whatever you want to call it okay a couple of bells going down guys just haven't got enough toughness at the front there really they should have had the cruiser screen at the front thinking about it but a little late for that look at it it's getting pasted by 18 inch shells Absolutely wasted, guys. I give you the Japanese first fleet. Summit's dead on the Japanese. Is that Sendai down? Yeah, the Sendai. Yep, Sendai up for it's going down. Roger. Yeah. Yeah. Yamato stuff, I just got it going again, and then get Sendai again. Roger. Thank you. Keep moving. To be fair to Sendai, she's taken probably hundreds of five-inch shells. Now, interestingly, the uh, American cruisers are barely had a look in at the moment. Yes, they're firing. I'm going to guess 18-inch shells, but I, that is a guess. I'm certainly going to do much more damage than the small fibers on the uh, on the destroyers. Another destroyer sinking, look. Still being pummeled. Oh, wow. Oh, there's a bark. No sound from the uh, cruisers. That's weird. These float planes are not modeled, by the way. I'm getting them. I'm getting sound on my end. Watch out. Watching the Sendai go down. Yeah. Try to go down. Trying to send her out of harm's way. Yeah. Agreed. Her guns are now ineffective. She's no longer firing back. She's too damaged. One of her funnels is gone. Another bell is going down. Distance between the surface... Oh, another bell's gone. The bells are just... Destroyers are not designed to take punishment like this. These are armor-piercing shells raining down on them. They've barely got armored deck. They're just too close to the 18-inch shells now, guys. They're just too close now. Yeah, we're, we're within decks for iron bombs. Is that Sendai still alive? Ow! Oh, another one's no. dead. No. Another bell's dead, guys. Oh, sugar! The whole guys have got stuck. No, they haven't. Why are these guys so far behind, Scott, on the blue? Oh, well. It's done. That's maybe they question. maybe they took a bigger route started, or something. They started way they start up. further away, right. So that's how it is. Blue's actually had more surface fleet, by the way, in terms of numbers. But Red's have got two Yamato battleships that have more firepower, pretty much, than all these blues put together. Those 18 inch guns, you know, and they are just chewing through those destroyers. Like, that must be what the difference is. Oh, guns down. Guns down. No guns up. Oh, it's because they're closer. I was like, why are the, why are the guns down? The rain of hell is happening on that. Look at that guy. 
Wow, six mile spread. Just getting annihilated. Are those American? Okay, the American cruisers are properly in the battle now. They're much tougher than those destroyers. Cruisers are designed to take hits. Not like a battleship, oh, they, but. Oh, that, that bell just went. Look, at it was mullered. See all those 18 inches exploding around her? Bless her cotton socks, guys. Atomized, absolutely atomized. Yamato, looking for a new target. Right. Uh, Yunagi just took a big hit. Stand by. Yunagi, yeah. Oh, it's a destroyer, yeah. So these take almost no damage. Hits. That's the cruisers hitting her. It's the cruisers. Yes, she's hit, she's hit. That's just, Yunagi's, Yunagi's down. gone down. Yeah, that's the, uh, I've made them all Yunagis because that's the only one, the damage model I get working properly. Um, the destroyers, so suck it up. Right, that's two Japanese ships down, including a cruiser. No American cruisers down, but a whole bunch of, uh, all the 18 inches. Uh, Yamato is now shooting at, oh, this cruiser is absolutely dying. The Yamato is so accurate with her 18 inches at this range. Almost every shot is hitting. Wow. Look at that. I was not expecting that. Why would you be a naval seaman against that? Even a cruiser, a heavy cruiser that is, smash it to pieces, 12,000 tons or whatever it is. Nothing compared to a Yamato, which is 72,000 tons, almost as much as an American supercarrier. That's how big those battleships are. She went down for swinging, guys. No one can damage those. Okay, Yamato's getting hit now. Yamato is now taking hits. In terms of toughness, I've made her as tough as a, as a carrier. Look at the torpedo blisters, it's massive. Oh, powerhouse. She will take hit after hit after hit. Yeah, we got a little more than that sliver. Down on her. Yeah, I'm watching hits. I'm watching we also have uh, P-51s approaching the car um, Japanese carriers about 12 miles out. Oh, look at that. They've made it through. They've made it through. Yeah, the attrition rate's just been so high. Wow-wee. I bet you the J uh, Japanese have been running out of fuel and ammo. I did not see that coming, guys. That's the one problem. The Zero doesn't carry much ammo compared to the Mustang, and that's what's been saving. That's why... Who would have thought that would have been the factor? And that's what happened in real life. Those Zeros all ran out of ammo. And the Dawnless got through. Oh, here we go. This guy's about to get pasted. I mean, it doesn't... Wow, look at the destruction on Bell, guys. The entire of the Japanese first fleet just took her down. Oh, that is horrible to see. Imagine having to fight that in real life. Good lord. Well, we're ha almost halfway through the lead yacht. Yamato, Yamato's dying, Yamato's dying. No, my favorite ship. Leave her alone. Okay, the Americans have got through. Scott, start your dodging. But six miles out and now facing absolutely no opponents. Now, it doesn't really matter about this surface fleet win. What matters really is the carriers. The carriers are what do the damage and are what are the prestige. And where are the American guys that run away? Okay, they are miles away. I can't believe Yamato's taking such nasty damage. Let me know when they're bombing up. Uh, you stop. Raj. Oh, she was just turning away. She was atomized. Maybe they're going for a bomb run. Okay, the first, Task Force 16, has pretty much been wiped out with Yamato's in Red Hill. No! How could you do it? Five miles out. Yamato's guns are no longer working. Her turrets have been knocked out. Oh, I can't believe it, guys. That's no, not my flagship. Beautiful don't, ship. Don't sink my battleship. They will. You know what, at least it's taken a lot of rounds and it's saved the rest of the fleet. Yeah, that physical was worth the last one. So yeah, it's good. And that the AI logic is always going to target the closest ship to it. We're shooting for a second. Looks 
seems like the uh, uh, PP1s trying to attack the Japanese are getting in, in, entangled in dogfights. God damn it. Stupid, stupid, stupid. You got one low level that's coming in about three miles. Come on. Come on. Come on, American. Don't do something stupid. Just do it. Do your job. You don't do an American thing. Don't get distracted. It looks like it, it looks like the uh now that the numbers are on the blue side there. There he goes guys. He's, I think he's gonna do it. He's doing it. Go American! Look at Scott doing the carriers. Come on Scott, make him spin, make him spin! Come on, do some donuts, come on, hurry up. That triple A. That triple A though. Oh, he just took hits. He can't bomb. He got hit. He just took hits. He can't bomb. Oh, bombs oh, away. He got away. a bomb away. He got a bomb away. What a friggin' hero. He's gonna hit. Oh, yeah. Wow, oh, it's a good battle. How much damage? How much damage? Did it take damage? Where is it? Oh, only a tiny bit of damage. Oh, that's weird. I sure I saw it as damage. More bombs out. They're in. They're all in. Oh, no. Bombs Crap. hit. Yes, and they're taking serious damage now. Oh, Scott, 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 Scott. They've got through to you, sir. They've got through to you. Wowee. Turn, guys, turn. Oh, one's in yellow, one's in yellow. The Americans have got through. Jesus. One's got shot down. I mean, they will do. There's so much triple A there. Oh, he's going to have a rather miserable death if he just tries to land on that carrier. So much triple nice. A. Oh, he went in for oh, a, an American kamikaze. No way. I haven't seen that before. He missed. We got another one coming in. Go on, sir. Go on, sir. We all you wish you well. Oh, he's on fire! Oh. He's on fire! Oh! He changed his target at the last minute for some reason. I think it's because the carriers were turning. Much harder. That's right, another one. Just Bombs release. out! Bombs out! Oh! Scott! Turn, yes! Turn. Good dodge! What a dodge! <laughs> he dodged! Well done! Look at the turn on it! Oh, that's skills, boys. That's skills. Another one's coming in. Bombs away! Bombs away! Bombs away! Wowie! Uh oh, Scott. He's dodging. Yes, he's gonna dodge. It's no. Yes, 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 Dad. I changed directions. Come on. Yes, come on, come on. he did. He dodged it. They didn't fuse. Wowie! That is exactly what they did in real life, guys. I mean, doing a great job. God, it must have been exhausting being a freaking thingy commander. More coming in, Scott. I More. command my thingy all the time, so I'm used to it. Here we go. That guy is, uses bombs. Man, I've got such a sore throat from shouting, but who can stop? Who could stop at a time like this? Bomber coming in. Bomber coming in. Yeah, I'm trying to change it. Uh-oh. There it comes. Yeah, oh, he's not moving, Scott. Board. You're not moving. You're a sitting That's... duck. I'm going to go flank. Bombs away. Bombs away. Scott, move. Move, I... move. It's in the yellow. Oh, and we got another one incoming. Woohoo! Man, my carriers are smoking. Yes, you've got a whole. You've got a whole. Oh, there's only a few more to go, and then they've run out. That's Yorktowns. That's the last of Yorktowns bombers coming in. Just as they did in real life, Scott. This is literally what they did in real life. It was Yorktowns that did the damage. You've got to survive them, and then you'll survive the battle. And then you get your Romanian Mato go and do the friggin' damage. Scott, yes, sir. I am firing at Echo Victor 28. Do you have a ship in this <laughs> Miss. Bombs away, oh, bombs no, away. Bombs out. Turn, turn, turn. Oh, 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 oh. It's not very maneuverable ship, Scott. Oh. One hit, one missed. One hit, one missed. Well done for the starboard turn. The starboard turn saved you. Um, we got two more in coming. Oh, 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 it's a good turn, Scott. It's a good turn. It might work. 
I hit you on the power! Oh, I hit you on the stern! You're in red health, Scott! My rudder's broken. No, he's broken the rudder! Oh, goodness gracious me! Norsco's coming in! Oh no! Got American hero! Firing! Echo Victor! Oh, you okay. shot his oh, tail! Oh, you shot his tail off! Kamikaze? He's, he's not giving up, Scott! He's not giving up! Come on, come on, come on! Yeah! You've almost... That is Yorktown's... That's Yorktown all finished! They're out of bombers! I think that's everyone done. I think you survived. One carrying red and basically limping home. One in yellow still working. I think that's it, guys. Wow. Wowee. I did not expect this turnout at all. I did not either. Wow. Best battle yet, guys. Just shows you all the work setting this up. Finally worth it. Uh, there are more bombers out there. There are some more Yorktown bombers, but they're in dogfights. The Americans have got hold of them. And I think we just set a, a uh, Guinness Book of World Records. Yeah. Biggest yeah. DC, DC, DCS fight of all. Well over 500. Well over 500. And the server didn't even didn't even wince. I should say we've got a new server to this. Thank you, to Scott and RC, for providing what we needed. Take a while before we got there. So oh, hang on, no. No, I apologise, Scott. It was a false alarm. There are two more coming through. I thought they were dogfighting. I was caught reloading, sorry. Right, can he turn quick enough? Can he turn quick enough? I think this is Karga they're going after. They're going after Karga. Who was, of course, well, they're all sunk in real life. Oh, he turned off. He turned off. He got a bit of shrapnel in the eye or something. Didn't like the angle. You live to fight another day, Scott. This guy's, this guy's missing a friggin' aileron. A flap, sorry. Turn, guys, turn! Bombs away, bombs away, bombs away. It's got a starboard turn on. Is he cranked it enough, though? Has he cranked it enough? That could be a dead carrier if it hits. Oh my goodness, this is exciting. Ah! On the bridge! Oh. On, the, on the island! You're down, Scott, you're down! I was gonna fire that yeoman, but I don't, don't have to anymore. Actually, you've got one pixel of health, but it's a dead carrier, obviously. It's on fire. Wow, ah, it's just a flesh wound. There you go, agreed. Look at that, that's not going very far. I can tell you that. <laughs> oh, man, this is Excite. I are Excite. He's going kamikaze. What is this with the Americans and kamikaze at the moment? You gonna strafe? They must have had some new code. I don't know, Scott. Oh, no, that oh. was a kamikaze. That was a kamikaze. But it knocked his bits off and he can't fly. Wowee. Wowee. What a way to go down. What a hero. Lots of heroes today, guys. Everyone's put themselves in the way of danger. And we've had thousands die today. Simulated. Oh, more bombs out? No, no, never mind. No, I, I, I don't think you've got any more, Scott. Let me just double check. No, there are... Oh, there's one more. Where did he go? There's one going low. Is that you, Simba, in the plane? There's one going low next to your ship. I don't know what he's trying to do. He's gone weird. I think he's trying to dogfight. He is. He's trying to dogfight. A damage zero. This is where the AI just kind of like starts to go all Skynet and does its own shit. What the hell's that Zero doing? Zero's gone Skynet as well. Ah, I see what he's doing now. He's running away from a Z. Get him. <laughs> uh oh. This is not going to end well for him. Fire! Fire! Why you got it? He might not have any ammo. Use your face. That's an hors d'oeuvre. It is an hors d'oeuvre. You watch him do it now, it'll be freaking awesome. Oh, he does! He's got some 20 mic mic left! Oh, the last bomber! The last bomber, Scott, is saved by that hero! Japanese man. Wowie, I can't see any other bombers with bombs on, guys. Right, it's just the surface fleet now, guys, and that's pretty much it. Oh, oh. the second Yamamoto is down. Where, 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 where? No, she's not. Yeah, where is she? How? How did she get destroyed?
No, the second one's north. The second one's north. Like an eighth of a health left. No, negative. The second one's full health. I can, I'm, I'm viewing her. She's north. Oh, oh right, yeah, yeah. They, yep, they're, they're right next to each other. Gonna see if I can uh, take out the rest of your uh, surface fleet here. You can redirect them if you want, Scott. To uh, take them out. They can't catch the carrier group up. They've got the same flank speed as the carrier, so they won't catch these guys up. And the Americans did better than the Japanese. Yeah. So. Well, this heavy cruiser against the remnants of the first Japanese fleet. We salute you, sir, for those who are about to die. That was, that was fast. Two went down already. Bad Yamato, Yamato actually survived. The dead one survived. Still, well, still floating at least. She's firing at these guys who are chasing the carriers down. I've programmed to go and chase the carriers down. That's interesting. Oh, she's not going to last long, I'm afraid. Valued humanoids. Uh, we've got a bunch of destroyers that Scott's just sent towards her. Two massive 18-inch shells just exploded on her. The bridge area. She's got a turret out. Feed turrets out. Another big hit. Making a turn to port. Our midships just exploded. Oh, oh, oh no. She's down. She's burning. Damage control, we're never going to sort that out. She's still got power. Yeah, but she's not going to any fire, though. Oh, never mind. These American cruisers are tough, man. They are tough. Oh, she's sinking! She's sinking, Scott! Oh! Oh! There she goes. Everyone salute, I'm saluting. We salute you. You put up an excellent Valiant fight, American. Sorry, uh, one, Simba. Just yeah. sunk your destroyer. Yeah, sorry, Simba. Uh, once it's fully submerged... Okay. Once I got a Yaman Blitzer. Once it's fully submerged, uh, pause the server, and we'll do the BDA. A moment of silence. That's the end, guys. That's the end of our biggest, most complex battle so far. All the stress of getting that to work was worth it. Let's do a BDA. So, carrier damage. One Japanese carrier has been damaged beyond repair. It's still on fire. It will sink. There's no doubt about it. One is heavily damaged, but still operational. Two, untouched. American carriers. One is heavily damaged. One has minor damage. Both are operational. Both will return to port. Uh, so Americans, they've killed a carrier. In terms of aircraft, which ones have lost most? I've got no way of telling you that. What I can say is there look like they're more blue aircraft on the map than red. And remember that the blue started off with less aircraft, as in history. So I would say the Americans probably won the air war as well. Surface fleet? Well, amazingly, a different story. Again, everything is set up as accurate as we could. The surface fleet of the Japanese absolutely whipped the American surface fleet. Again, I reiterate, everything was set fair uh, to either side. Uh, Simba destroyed two cruisers, some destroyers, I don't know how many, and pretty much has destroyed that Yamato battleship there. The other one survived. But all of the non-escort destroyers and cruisers, the Americans were destroyed. I'm going to have a guess at 20. So to reiterate, 
the Americans destroyed one carrier and a whole bunch of uh, more fighters, more aircraft. The Japanese destroyed probably 20 surface vessels for the loss of three or four. I've got no way of confirming really who won from that then. What was most important, a carrier or 20 ships? I don't know. I'm going to let I'm going to turn that over to the valued viewers to decide who you think won that. In terms of going forward, these three carriers would would get to the base there and get within cover. Um, the uh, Japanese service fleet probably can't catch up. Technically, the uh, sprint of these destroyers can go 40 knots, and maybe they could catch up, but they would probably be destroyed by the cruisers here anyway. So uh, it probably wouldn't do any, do much damage. Uh, definitely our best one yet. Scott, any notes from you? I have to say that. Um uh, that I think the air war was definitely won by the Americans, but um, at the end of the day, it's how many op um, operational carriers you have. It is. That's so, what wins wars. Yeah. Exactly. So with um, Japan being so far away from their homeland, um, I'd say that the Americans took away a win on this. Simba. Yep. I was going to say the same thing because uh, one of the problems with all the Japanese planes that are still in flight is they're not really going to have anywhere to land even with having less of a defense fleet the americans would still be able to put air power back up and go back after japanese carriers so not having that air defense for the jap if they were to go at it again would definitely be in effect well jump i'm not going to pretend to really know so i'm going to put it back to the value viewers who won that fight what do you think Thank you very much, Valued Humanoids. The next battle, like I said, is going to be the original uh, midway battle, but with the legacy Japanese carrier replaced with the modern Japanese carrier. When we can get the details, I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you later.